in the past decade, there has been an increase in research into cervical neck pain and associated musculoskeletal disorders in the general population. However, there has been a distinct lack of research for managing the climber with neck pain and preventing pain in this population. While neck pain is not as common as shoulder pain in climbers, there are many sport climbers and boulderers that can testify to neck pain after a hard or long session. And this may not necessarily be because they were belay. In this short video, I will set out how to correct some of the common dynamic movement flaws displayed by boulderers and how to retrain these movement flaws with simple drills. The cervical spine supports and orientates the head in space relative to the thoracic spine. To do this effectively and efficiently, the cervical spine and its muscle system consist of the deep and superficial muscles, which must work collaboratively to allow movement and stability. The deep muscle system should be able to maintain control of the cervical spine's individual segments during low load postural activities and high fatiguing activities such as hard bouldering problems. This is achieved by co-activation of the deep and superficial muscles to control abnormal intersegmental uncontrolled movement. It also helps with controlling the spine's neutral curves and maintaining the head balance on the upper cervical spine. The shoulder girdle is of particular interest to therapists that rehabilitate climbers because there is research which demonstrates changes in both shoulder and shoulder blade muscle stability function in people that have neck pain. In general, people with neck pain tend to have abnormal movement patterns and neck control, limited muscle endurance, they tend to have less strength and also altered coordination. In this video, I am training a specific boulder problem. I display some common movement faults during this problem. For example, in the upper cervical spine, I have greater movement into extension or backward bending, as does the middle cervical spine. This is clearly evident by the way I continually look up towards the ceiling. This can lead to an increased load of the cervical extensor muscles, which can lead to tightness and tender muscle points within that muscle. Additionally, it can also cause irritation to the cervical joints because of excessive load and specific spinal joints that display uncontrolled movement. Also, look closely at the shoulder girdle on thoracic spine. I'm not using this region effectively to support my neck. Research has shown that improving alignment of both the thoracic spine and shoulder girdle leads to improvements in cervical spine function. In this exercise, I demonstrate how to prevent uncontrolled movement of the upper and middle cervical spines. This abnormal movement pattern is seen regularly in climbers with no awareness of movement control or neck coordination. The neck is positioned in flexion or forward bending while sitting. The head is allowed to hinge forward so that the lower cervical spine is in flexion. The upper and middle cervical spine is positioned in neutral by actively lifting and dropping the chin through its full range of motion until positioned in the middle of this range. The goal is to execute spinal extension without lifting the chin upwards or towards the ceiling excessively by maintaining an upper cervical spine neutral position. A top tip for you is to place your two fingers at the base of your skull. If the fingers move closer together, then there is uncontrolled movement at the upper cervical spine while extending. The ideal pattern should be one of smooth and even neck extension or backward bending all through the neck. We should see in optimal health concurrent upper and lower cervical spine movement.
video sequence, I demonstrate optimal alignment of the upper and middle cervical spine and also the shoulder girdle. Restoring and maintaining precise movement at specific body regions is key to preventing and controlling musculoskeletal pain. Remember, a major premise of this type of retraining is that the human body is a mechanical system. However, it must be treated holistically. However, as with other mechanical systems, alignment is important. Ideal alignment allows optimal movement and reduces the chances of microtrauma to joints and supporting structures. Research has shown consistently that the spinal segment subjected to the most amount of movement shows the greatest signs of degenerative changes. Thank you for listening. If you'd like for me to deliver an injury prevention workshop or course at your climbing wall or would like to see me for an injury or strength and condition evaluation, then please contact me at info at insideedgephysio.com. Alternatively, you can catch me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook and also Twitter. And I also have a weekly newsletter which can be accessed at www.insideedgephysio.com. Now for the important bit. This information contained in this video is not intended as a replacement for a healthcare professional or as a diagnostic tool for patients and should not be used as such. The content on my site and in my videos does not constitute advice on which you should rely upon. It's provided for general information purposes only.